Rick, you, you guys have kind of been sluggish down the stretch the last couple of seasons. Did, did you guys look at that this off season and maybe is there commonalities there? Or is there a way to? No, I, I, I didn't really see it that way myself okay. um, last season. Um, you know, with all that we had gone through, um, I felt like that we were still fighting hard. I thought we were playing as well as we were when we were winning games. Mm -hmm. But the thing that we ran into was two teams that played really well against us. It wasn't like we were, you know, flat or got blew out. Um, you know, the games that we lost were competitive. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in the Maryland series, the last weekend of the season, they just played, played great. You know, we rallied back from big deficits, tied the game in the ninth inning in two to three games and just got beat and um, then bounced back and we beat the number one seed in the Big Ten tournament. I just think it was more baseball related than anything else. I didn't feel like it was uh, sluggish. Now, we were shorthanded last year and I do, I do think that um, the back end of our bullpen got a little tired at the end of the season because we had to, to go to them a lot. Now, um, I really feel like and it'll be a question for later, but this team that's probably the biggest strength is our is our depth not only uh, in front line starting pitching but you know having Grant Leonard back as um, you know the school record holder in, in saves and getting all American type um, honors early a, as a closer Trace Hoffman back we've added some guys to the back end uh, Ben Post is healthy so I'm hoping that will be solved and that was really one of the bigger issues as we went down the stretch was some of those guys were kind of on fumes. You guys have played so well at home the last few years. How do you take that away from home and at least get back, you know, maybe a 500 mark away from Banks? Um, you know, that's not easy to do. I mean, it's it's no different than you're watching in basketball. And I think uh, I'm talking off my head, but I know at least uh, at one point last year, the year before, the, the winning percentage for home teams in baseball was greater than basketball. It's like 68%. Um, and for us, I think we've played pretty well on the road in the time that we've been here. It's just very difficult to open up five weekends in a row on the road, and that's weather dictated, and there's nothing we can do to control that. Uh, and then, you know, if you look at the schedule this year, we're on the road for five straight weeks. We're home, and then we got to go back to Penn State. And just, it's, tough. It's, tough to, it's tough to win on the road, but uh, as, you, as your point is, uh, it's a well-made that we've got to play better on the road. When you look at what Michigan did last year, what does that do for the rest of the Big Ten? You know, knowing that you can literally compete for a national championship. Well, I think what it did was it validated what all of us in the league already knew. And, um, you know, hats off to, to Michigan and, and, and Coach Backus uh, for what they did. I mean, it wasn't an easy road either. And, and uh, they played extremely well, but it really sent a message, I think, nationally uh, where our league is right now. So Rick, what has to happen for this team to contend for a Big Ten title? I know it's a broad question, but just... Well, I'm, I'm super optimistic heading in to, to next week uh, uh, with our pitching in the, in the depth and having the guys who were injured back. It's almost like a bonus recruiting class. So we do have you know quite a bit of depth. Um, when you're a pitching-oriented team, you have to play great defense. And, and so that's going to be one thing we have to do. And then... Uh, with a lot of um, you know, new faces throughout the lineup. Um, we've got to develop some sort of consistency and an identity for our offense, uh, what, how we're going to score runs. Uh, and I think a lot of that will shake out as we, we get into the first three or four weeks. Um, I, told, I think I told you when we talked on the radio that going into this season, we still had more battles going on for positions than maybe any year uh, that I've coached. I mean, you usually have two or three guys who are battling out at certain spots, and we've got guys battling out for six or seven spots, and uh, it, it's a lineup that may change quite a bit in those first three or four weeks trying to, to figure out what the best one is or if it's a lineup that we have to play lefty-righty matchups or however we're going to have to do it. So uh, there's going to be a learning curve in there you know, offensively, but I do, I do like the offense. I think we have a chance to be uh, a scrappy lineup from top to bottom with tough outs all the way down. And uh, you know, we've got, if we can get um, you know, Tanner Padgett back healthy in the middle of the lineup, who provides a big force that we were without the majority of the season last year. Um, having Peyton Williams um, come in, a big, strong, left-handed power-type hitter, uh, we were missing that. And, and, and hopefully those two 
uh, can produce for us. And then you've got the guys that did a good job for us last season, Isaiah Fillard, uh, you know, Austin Martin, uh, Zeb Adrian, you know, those guys uh, to step up. And then Ben Norman, too. I mean, ben, ben was battling some wrist issues most of the season and he just had to kind of tape it up and play through it. He was able to get that fixed in the offseason. He's swinging it better than he has in a long time. So there, there's a lot. Of there's a lot of optimism out there uh, for the offense, but we're going to have to pitch and play defense. When, when you're kind of tinkering with a lot of different guys, a lot of different spots, that also impacts who's hitting where. And right. How, how much are you cognizant of that as you kind of tinker? Well, a lot. But, you know, pretty much until <laughs> every night I've been drawing lineups out. My wife's ready to kill me until I go to bed when I get home every single night, just thinking about different ways to do it and different matchups and how we can. Uh, We'll get the best lineup out there and uh, one of the concerns and, and something that will have to be answered fairly quickly is who's going to be there. I mean, we lost Chris Whelan who was in that role for, for really three years and one of the top on base percentage guys in the league. Uh, you know, Kind of a non-traditional leadoff guy where he wasn't a base stealer but was on base a, a lot and finding uh, you know someone who can step into that role and is, a, is a big question that needs to be answered but uh, just a lot of a lot of things uh, that we'll try and, and mix around the, those first you know, three or four weeks. So flashes at the end of 18, what Jack Dreyer can bring to this team. Obviously, last year was a, a tough year. Where is he at right now, coming back, and, and how much is he buying for that Friday night spot? One that's obviously, you know, there's been a solid trend there the mm -hmm. last few years. No, he he's in a great spot right now. Um, I, would, I would tell you. It's better. It's better than it was at any point you know, prior to this. Mm -hmm. he's, he's strong. Uh, he's healthy. He's confident. He's pitched really well every time that we've done our live sets uh, up to this point. So you know, he's in a really good place, and, and we'll likely give Jack the ball, uh, you know, to start the game on Friday. Uh, the good thing is, is that we've got five or six other guys who are who are fighting for spots in the rotation. Uh, Drew Irvine has pitched absolutely outstanding and probably as, as big a turnaround as I've, as I've seen in a long, long time in a player from one year to the other, uh, you know, in all areas. Um, his pitchability, his velocity has gone up. Uh, Robin Lund, our pitching coach, has really meshed with Drew. And, and I think you're going to see when you see Drew pitch, I mean, he's right up there. As a, as a Friday night caliber starter. Um, you got Grant Judkins back, you got Trent Wallace fighting for a spot, and Trenton's in a way better place than he's ever been uh, at this point in the year. And we, you know, Cam Bauman, uh, you know, Duncan Davitt, and, and then uh, Hunter Lee, who we were without last season, is fighting as well for one of those spots. So it's going to be really nice this first weekend uh, going south, knowing that we don't have to stretch anybody out for any extended period of time. We can kind of have double starts in each one of the game, take a look at each one of these guys, and try to come up with the best uh, role for each one of them. How, 